you have two incidents. One is in the Hijra. One is in the Battle of Badr. In the Hijra, the Prophet وسلم, you know, he Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he came to him at a time that you know normally doesn't come to him, and he said, you know, Allah has given me permission to do Hijra. You know the story. Abu Bakr said, as ya Rasulullah. Up until the last point, even his best friend didn't know that, that the Prophet وسلم, was going for Hijra at this time. Till the last moment. Like as soon as he found out, they left. And that's part of strategy as well. And, and then the, you know, they took the sheep out so that it would cover the tracks. They had the milk. You had Aisha, you had um, um, her sister Asma. You had these guides. They went out. Instead of going towards Medina, they went in the opposite direction. They stayed in the cave. All of this strategy. And yet, the mushrikeen came at the cave, the mouth of the cave, and the Prophet and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu says, Ya Rasulullah, if only if they just look down, they'll see us. And the Prophet وسلم, said, Ma dhannuka bithnaini Allahu thalithuhuma. What do you think of two people for whom Allah is the third? And, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in the Quran, Id qalil uh, li sahibihi la tahzan inna Allah ma'ana. When he said to his friend, La tahzan, don't be sad, in Allah ma'ana. Don't be worried, don't be sad, Allah is with us. Now that's the hijrah. Look at the battle of Badr. They were going to cut off the caravan. Caravan escapes, the caravan goes to Mecca. They come back with an army. Um, the Muslims are waiting for the caravan. Then they find out that an army is coming to fight. Uh, many of them didn't know that the, it would actually be a battle, but there's no running away now. They will have to go to, uh, to fight with whatever, with whatever they have. And the Prophet is standing, making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in crying. And, Abu, and, and the Prophet وسلم, in his dua, he's saying, Oh Allah, if you destroy this party of believers, you will never be worshipped on earth again. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, the Prophet Sallallahu hands are so high and he's crying. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is putting the shawl on his shoulders and he's saying, رُوَيْدًا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ نَاصِرُكُ وَمُنْجِزُ وَعَدَكُ He said, Allah will give you victory and will fulfill your promise. I ask you, what's the difference between the two? Why in the hijrah is the Prophet Sallallahu saying to Abu Bakr, لا تحزن and why in the battle of Badr is the Prophet وسلم, the one who is crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Abu Bakr is the one who is telling him that Allah will fulfill his promise to you. What's the difference between the two? Just one word, if you get it. Somebody want to give it a try? What's the difference? Hint, it has something to do with my topic today. <laughs> What's one word? I just need one word. Strategy is the word. Strategy is the difference between the two. In the Hijrah, it was completely strategized. The Battle of Badr was not strategized. It was, this is just what happened. And they would have to fight with whatever they have. Now I ask you, how many things in our community are strategized? <laughs> and you're thinking, hmm, I can't think of anything exactly. <laughs> right? And how many things do we do that it just comes along? Everything is just like something happens. Oh, you know, we have to go in this direction. We have to go in that direction. Just like a cork bottle on the water, whatever, you know, kind of hits us from this side or that side. <clears throat> and I say this about a car. Imagine a car that's just driving. There's no driver. You know, somebody just locked in the, um, in the, the gas and it's moving forward. What will happen to that car? So I asked this to little kids. Little kids are very familiar. He said, the car will crash over the, uh, over the bridge. Okay, you agree with that? Here's the problem though, the car is not empty, it has people in it. It has people in it. The community is in the back seat. And now I have a principle that says, if you have no driver, if you have no leader, if you have no strategy, you have no intelligence in how the thing is moving forward, then shaitan is the driver. Shaitan is the one who's leading things. And I can give you a thousand examples of that of how we sit back 
and Junud <laughs> Iblis are just promoting this issue and that issue and society changes and laws are being implemented and you, you're losing your children from underneath you, left, right and center, because there's no strategy. And so um, <clears throat> I'll give a chance to my um, shiuk to, to speak. But in conclusion, <clears throat> here is one major strategy lesson that I learned. And I hope inshallah ta'ala maybe it'll hit some ears and hit some hearts. One of the biggest mistakes in strategy is trying to do everything. Ultimately by trying to do everything, you're doing nothing. And that's human nature. I even call it a dragon because it destroys the lives of people. That they never achieve anything in their life because they say, I, I have to do everything. And I'll say, then you're doomed to do nothing if that's going to be the case. But what if one person, for example, is responsible for orphans? One person is example responsible for new Muslims. One person, example, is responsible for halal chicken. <laughs> One person is responsible for the education of, you know, the, the seniors in the community. Another person responsible for, you know, those who are handicapped and needy in the community. Another person responsible for, you know, outreach to um, the other face in the community. Another person responsible. Everybody just says, you know what? Uh, I'll take care of this. This is what I'll do, and I'll do it with ihsan. I'm not responsible for anything else. If you need my help for anything, don't call me. <laughs> because I'm focused on what I'm doing. And inshallah ta'ala, I hope the best. So when somebody comes to me and says, Brother Muhammad, don't you see you know, X, Y, and Z problems in the community? And, and they're mad at me. And I'm like, we're doing something. How about you? The community needs more than your whining and complaining. It needs you to actually you know, buckle up and go for a ride and get some focus and do something for this deen. And if only this attitude continued, just take one slice, the smaller the slice, the more you focus on it, do something that you love to do, but do it with ihsan, and you'll see the whole community flourishing and benefit with strategy from all different directions, inshallah ta'ala.